Hello and welcome to beautiful, bustling Tokyo. This is the opening ceremony, the Tokyo 2020 Summer Paralympic Games on a beautiful, warm, almost sultry evening here in Tokyo. 16 days after a stunning Olympic closing ceremony, Tokyo becomes the first city to stage a second Paralympic Games, having hosted them in 1964. It was at those games that the term Paralympic was first used in association with this wonderful event. Tonight, all bar a few of the National Paralympic delegations will parade into this magnificent stadium here in the heart of Tokyo, ahead of a dozen days of world-class sporting action. These are, of course, extraordinary games taking place in extraordinary times for the whole world. The global coronavirus pandemic has affected every single person on this planet, impacting the world's 1.2 billion persons with disabilities and impairments disproportionately. So these Paralympic Games will showcase the strength and diversity of the human spirit, highlighting that out of adversity must always come hope. Tonight's opening ceremony will set the tone in that regard with a show packed with symbolic messages of inclusivity and exceptional ability, courage and inspiration. And there will be no shortage of emotion. It feels like something really special is going to be happening here tonight. There's going to be a real connection and the anticipation is tangible in Tokyo. All those pre-games fears can be left behind now because here we are in this glorious new stadium where it's a warm 29 Celsius and just this 68% humidity. And I don't know about anyone else, but I'm feeling the nervous excitement, waiting for the show to get going because in the long five years since this summer Paralympics family last got together the world has changed in all those unforeseeable ways it's been scary there's been grief and loss we've all been kept away from so much of what we love but para athletes move forward after setbacks and now we're set to start the competition and if the Paralympic Games are new to you then welcome you're in for a treat even before we get to the elite sporting action. Coming up in the next few hours, I can promise you a joyous, spine-tingling, colourful opening ceremony. There'll be fireworks, of course, incredible dancing, magnificent music, and a cast of performers you will fall in love with. It's going to be emotional. And before they take centre stage in the sporting arenas, our soon-to-be fully-fledged Paralympians will be coming together at last and taking a front row seat to watch a brilliant show. And Rob, you know firsthand what it's like backstage, what it's like to join the parade of athletes. Well, it's that feeling of anticipation. It's that feeling of maybe meeting old friends, making new friends with that little bit of nervous energy that tomorrow or the next day or the day after the event that you've been planning for, working for, training for is right there it's right about to happen all of your dreams are close to being fulfilled and you know that energy and then also you want to part of you as an athlete wants to enjoy the show as well and so there's that juxtaposition as well with anticipation of the night the event and anticipation of the competition that will soon follow well tonight's ceremony is very much about movement and as uh, you've both alluded to, emotion. The artistic element of the show is entitled We Have Wings, and we're looking forward to a really special story there. But the opening ceremonies, and we've, we've seen many fantastic, spectacular, huge, colorful ceremonies. This might be a bit different tonight. Well, the executive producer of ceremonies for both the Olympic and Paralympic Games, Hiyoki Takeyuki, said opening ceremonies in the past have been a grand celebration, spectacular. But rather than those, we've created something with a strong message that will resonate with the audience. It's more about the emotional connection than the excitement. We've had a sneak peek preview and I, I ran out of tissues <laughs> because I was tearing up so much. The performers that we're going to see tonight all have such incredible stories. It's impossible to tell all of them tonight, but we'll, we'll do our very best. But I do guarantee if you sit tight, you're going to enjoy an absolutely magnificent show. Yeah, so much of what you see tonight will resonate with you, uh, I'm sure, in, in so, on some level or another. Um, the setting here tonight is a very familiar 
um, setting for many, I'm sure. Um, but slightly different, the artistic element of his set is we have wings, but it's set in that environment of constant, ever-changing movement, where people move through all the time. It's an airport, but not quite uh, the likes of which we are used to seeing. It's going to be an extraordinary story, a beautiful story as well. It's going to be a story about how we need to create our own energy, our own wind to lift us up, to fly and achieve our dreams, and it's going to be beautifully told a little bit about the theme as well. It'll be a moving forward theme. The ceremony organizers acknowledging the way the world has come together since early in 2020 to face the global threat that we all know about while recognizing the, their gratitude to those who made Tokyo 2020 possible. Well, it's been an amazing build up to uh, this Summer Paralympic Games, the Olympic Games hosted here. Remember Tokyo, the first city to host both games twice, 1964, 57 years ago. And a very different games we're in for here in this uh, absolutely stunning uh, city. Really has been a wonderful host. The one thing that will have changed, though, is that our athletes have got stronger, they've got faster, they train harder, they work harder, and some of them professional full-time athletes virtually with what they do. The quality of the competition that we're going to see will be the best ever here in Tokyo. And the stories behind the, those athletes are just the subplot to what um, is going to be an incredible journey over the next 12 days of the Games. And uh, look out for those and listen to those because they are truly inspirational and extraordinary. We can't wait to get to, to start to telling them in just a few minutes. And, uh, you know, Paralympic athletes know that, and you're going to hear this tonight, no matter which way the wind blows, it can be harnessed to move forward. And so I think that's a, a special theme as well. And there's a little bit more wind blowing in the stadium tonight. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed than we felt the other night. So winds of change coming in with the opening ceremony of the Paralympic Games. One thing you want to keep an eye out, uh, the number three is going to be appearing quite a lot in tonight's show, but also uh, We the 15, you'll hear more about that in coming days. Uh, the Colour Purple is part of a campaign to become the biggest ever human rights movement to represent the world's 1.2 billion persons with disabilities. That's 15% of people on this planet. So stay tuned for more on that. Yes, you may have uh, noticed uh any of the iconic uh, landmarks in your city about the color purple, one of those landmarks might have been lit up a couple of days ago. And that was all the launch of uh, hashtag we are 15. Well, we are not quite 15 seconds away, but we're very close to the opening ceremony of the uh, Tokyo 2020 Summer Paralympic Games in this beautiful stadium. What awaits on a warm, almost sultry night in Tokyo, an invitation, I think, to celebrate, to join it all, the physical resilience and mental fortitude and creative genius of humanity, not just here tonight, but over the next 12 days. But tonight, be prepared to be entertained. It is going to be exceptional. It'll set the tone through color, visually stimulating performances, and wonderfully creative art for the Paralympic Games. Welcome to the Para Airport. Enjoy with us the opening ceremony of the 2020 Tokyo Summer Paralympic Games.
Japan, His Majesty Emperor Naruhito. And Andrew Parsons, the International Paralympic President. Three-time Paralympic champion, Ice Sledge Speed Racing. Ice Sledge Speed Race Paralympic gold medalist, Miki Matheson. Matheson Miki San. Four-time Paralympic champion, Athletics. Rikujo, Paralympic, four-time Olympic gold medalist, Ozaki Mineho. Ozaki Mineho San. Badminton. Badminton. Imai Taiyo. Imai Taiyo san. Athletics. Rikujo. Yuguchi Arena. Yuguchi Arena san. Four-time Olympic champion. Wrestling. Wrestling. Olympic. Four-time Olympic gold medalist. Ichō Kaori. Ichō Kaori san. Rescue worker. Rescue team. Asatani Takumi. Asatani Takumi san. from local special needs schools here in Tokyo. Yeah, these schools that have been selected are either Tokyo Metropolitan Special Needs Education Schools or junior high schools that have been or are planning to collaborate with these schools in the future. All champions in their own right, and I love that the rescue worker Asatani Takumi is in the mix as well. There's a moment of expressing gratitude to uh, those who care and help on the front line. Beautiful rendition of House of Wind, a piano and orchestra version, composed by Tsugi Nabayuki. Such an honor to be carrying your national flag at the games, and you can see the pride oozing out. They will now hand the flag over to members of the Japan Ground Self Defense Eastern Army, Japan Maritime Self Defense Force of the Japan Air Self-Defense Fleet as well as members of the Air Defense Command.
solemn but highly significant moment in tonight's opening ceremony. Please stand for the national anthem of Japan. The flag will be raised by the representatives of the Japan Self-Defense Forces. ご協力ください。日本国旗の掲揚は自衛隊の代表により行われます。参議院 Stunning arrangement by Takebi Satoshi. Well, the cherry blossom plays such a big part in Japanese art, even in the dress there. And uh, like so many of the performers tonight, she was one of those who auditioned and got a part in tonight's performance. Welcome to the Para Airport. The inner workings of the Para Airport are exposed. And this is probably going to need just a little bit of explanation because these are the moving parts of the Para Airport, the machinery that we need to generate the wind to help the planes of the Para Airport fly. We've got pumps and switches and levers, and they're all inside a karakuri. Now, this is a traditional Japanese puppet that appears to move on its own, and we're looking at the inner workings here. You'll see the cast members coming on as springs and screws, levers and cogs, and they're all trying to generate the momentum we need to create flight later in the show. And it was a limited number of performers who were chosen. Just 75 out of more than five and a half thousand. They all auditioned. And this is their night. So now we see the ball bearings. Fundamental to the movement of match machinery. And it's all this movement that will create the wind that will be required to take flight. Taking their inspiration from ropes, these uh, cast members doing the double dutch and with a wheelchair too. That's former ice sledge hockey player Dasuki Yuhara. Also came through the audition process. He was a great player, I remember him well. <laughs> Still moving well.
significance in the colour of those ball bearings as well. Blue, red and green, the colour of the Ajitas. Now we've got all the screws and the levers in position, we need a little bit of momentum. Kamimoto Iri, she's the world champion of pole dancing. One with a hearing impairment, but wow. these huge balloons in the colors of the Paralympics red blue and green the arrival of the Ajitos something stirring the wind is coming it is blown in just under 11 meters long by 5.3 meters and the Ajitos of course means I move and they're moving beautifully. together to form the symbol of the Paralympic Games. Another spectacular round of fireworks illuminates the sky above Tokyo. The winds of change are coming. They're blowing in very welcome guests to Tokyo.
In just a few moments, athletes from all over the world will be arriving at the National Stadium. They will inspire and carry us into a brighter future filled with compassion for one another. Passengers, we are now ready to open the gates and for the winds of change. With all passengers, please prepare for the much anticipated arrival. It is the arrivals hall and the moment these athletes have been preparing for. DJ Seho will welcome them to the arrivals hall. It becomes a bit of a lounge as they arrive in here because they are going to have an absolutely wonderful time coming into the stadium. For the second time, a team representing more than 82 million people forced to flee away from the war on human rights Iceland. abuses. And there are five women in the Iceland team, just one in the refugee team. Iceland, led by Thelma Björnstotter and Patrick Alexson. He's a visually impaired athlete who compete in the 400 meters T11 father, a real inspiration to his ambitions in the Paralympics. Ireland! Ireland! Now Ireland can boast the fastest Paralympian on the planet in Jason Smith. He's unbeaten in more than a decade of sprinting in para-athletics. He's looking for a sixth gold medal. But the flag's being carried by Brittany Arendis, who's a powerlifter, and we've got Jordan Lee in an athlete as well in competition the irish a lovely deep bow there to on azerbaijan. 36 athletes from azerbaijan the flag bearer olakam mosayev won gold in shot put in beijing competing in his fourth paralympic games the team won 11 medals in rio including gold for judoka ramil gasimov Country of 10 million in southwestern Asia, north of Iran on the Caspian Sea, Azerbaijan. Welcome to Tokyo. Afghanistan! Afghanistan! Sadly, there are two athletes not able to uh, travel to Tokyo to take part in these games, but they will be celebrated here tonight. Seven medals in Rio for the United Arab Emirates. A total of 19 now since they made their Paralympic debut in 1992. The flag bearers, Aisha El Myheri from shooting and Mohammed Al Mahdi, a three-time world champion and three-time Paralympic medalist Algeria. from athletics. Now Algeria have won 73 Paralympic medals, but they've all come in either athletics or judo. This time, the team also contesting goal ball, powerlifting and the wheelchair basketball. Spectacular national costumes. Just the most uh, amazing time for these athletes. The biggest Spanish speaking country in the world and the second biggest country in South America. And their flag bearer is Yanina Martinez, the only gold medalist from uh, 2016 in Rio. And 44 year old Rodolfo Ramirez, who lost his eyesight at nine. He's taking part in his seventh games, hoping to add the silver. The medal he won in Atlanta and Beijing. They have good memories from Tokyo. That was their first Paralympics in 1964. They ended with 37 medals. Aruba! Aruba. This is the second time Aruba has competed in the Paralympic Games. Rio, the first, just one athlete in Tokyo. There he is, Elliot Andre Lundstra, the flag bearer. He will compete in Taekwondo, which makes its Paralympic debut. Aruba, beautiful Caribbean island, 100,000 people. Armenia! 
Armenia. Just the one representative from Armenia as well. Let me introduce Staz Nazarian. He gets to carry his Paralympic flag for the second uh, games in a row because he competed in the 2018 Winter Paralympics and he really wants that first medal for Armenia. Angola has won eight medals all time, all by sprinter Jose Armando Sayoivo. This time the flag bearer from athletics is 1500 meter runner Manuel Ernesto Jaime. There's two athletes in Tokyo for Angola. Beautiful costumes, wow. Yemen! Yemen! Well, welcome back, Yemen. Their second Paralympics, it's been a while. They first competed in Barcelona in 1992. They've been given wild cards by the International Paralympic Committee and most of the stadia in the country have been destroyed by war, but they will be competing. Physiotherapist Moran Samuel won bronze in rowing in Rio. Her son Arad was born in 2016 and her daughter Rom born in 2019. And the other flag bearer is Boccia athlete Nadav Levy in his second games. He's a computer programmer and developer. One of the original ten nations they competed in every Paralympic since 1960. You may recognize the rising phoenix, Bebe Vio, jointly carrying the flag with Federico Molaki, the 200 meters freestyle champion from Rio. Of course, uh, Rising Phoenix, BBVO, great documentary on the Paralympics. If you haven't seen it, she'll be defending her title in the foil wheelchair fencing. And Italy, one of the 12 countries to have attended every Paralympic Games. And they had great success in this very stadium <laughs> just two or three weeks ago, didn't they? They're hoping it's going to carry on. hosted the first Paralympic Games in 1960 and a big contingent from Italy. And many of these athletes will be competing tomorrow. But uh, they wouldn't want to miss out on this. Well, one of the youngest athletes at the Games, 14-year-old Fatima Suaid, will compete in the 140 meters F35. She's a flag bearer alongside shot put gold medalist in Rio, Gara Tanaish. They won two golds in uh, Rio. Now there was Koran Abdul Rahim, who won the men's javelin F41. We've got a women's goalball team and eight women in the various divisions of the powerlifting. The sports world lost a legend last year when two-time Paralympic powerlifting champion Saman Rahman, a hero in Iran, died at just age 31 in Rio. He became the first Paralympian ever to lift over 300 kilograms, almost three times his body weight. He was indeed a hero and he is very missed by this team. The flag bearers, Zara Samat, looking for her third straight gold medal in archery, and Noor Mohammed Areki from Athletics on the hunt for his first medal. They're also very, very strong in sitting volleyball. <laughs> they have made the final eight consecutive games. India had a great games in 2016. They won multiple gold medals for the first time and they're sending their biggest ever contingent to Tokyo, 54 of whom will be competing. Uh, a new addition to the schedule, badminton, of course. Archery athletics, swimming, weightlifting, all being competed by the Indian athletes. India. India. 270 million people in Indonesia, spread out over 17,000 islands. Flag bearers Hanak Poje Hastuti from shooting and Janelle Arapin from athletics, both competing in their first Paralympic Games. Uganda. Uganda. Landlocked East African country, independent in 1962. They have four athletes, David Imong. He's their only medalist. He won silver in the men's 1500 meters T45 46 in Rio. Looking to repeat again here in Tokyo. Ukraine! 
more than one reason to celebrate for these athletes, big para-athletes, because it's Ukrainian Independence Day today. Since 1996, they flourished as an independent nation, finished third in the medal table in Rio, and uh, have won more gold medals than any other former Soviet country apart from Russia. Full tally, 67 gold, 69 silver, and 92 bronze. They are very strong across the board in many sports. Just delighted to be here. I was Wonderful. Say, carrying the flag, uh, Yazel Teva Mareshko. Uh, she's going to be uh, looking to beat her hero, Ellie Simmons, again, who we're going to see very shortly for the British team. Big competition between those two. Wonderful uh, Ukrainian traditional uh, well, they had one medal in uh, three games prior to Rio, and they burst into life in Rio. 31 medals five years ago in athletics, judo, and swimming. They got golds and six silver and 17 bronze. Durkon Kubanov will be uh, in the shot put discus and javelin. And Muhammad Riksamov, a student at Bukhara University, will take part in the shot put F63. 47 athletes in 11 different sports. High hopes in judo, they've got uh, 12 competitors there. Two athletes competing in Tokyo from Uruguay, both the flag bearers, swimmer Lucia Dalazis, who's also working on her engineering degree, and from judo, Henry Borges, a five-time Paralympian, he and his wife, who also competes in judo, hope to set up a Paro Judo Academy in Uruguay. And we have two para-athletes here, or two Paralympians, I should say, who are here for their fourth games. Uh, Ellie Simmons, a five-time Paralympic champion, and John Stubbs, at the age of 56, the oldest member of the team. He'll be competing uh, in the individual compound archery. Ellie Simmons in the pool, of course. Eight athletes from Ecuador, all in athletics, at a wonderful moment in Tokyo when Naisei Dajomas won gold in Olympic weightlifting. First Ecuadorian woman ever to win Olympic gold. Flag bearers are Kiera Rodriguez, long jump world champion, and Darwin Castro Reyes, also from athletics. He's a middle distance runner. DJ Seho in full flight as the Egyptians come out, Africa's second most successful Paralympic nation behind South Africa. Very consistent, they've won at least a gold at every game since 1976. And they've got the amazing table tennis star Ibrahim Amatu. Holds the paddle in his mouth and tosses the ball in the air to serve with his foot. He is quite extraordinary. Forty-nine golds, twenty-two of those have come in powerlifting. And they'll have eight athletes in powerlifting here. Estonia. Estonian swimmer Cardo Plumampu will be competing in his fifth Paralympic Games. He was a bronze medalist in Beijing in 08. The flag bearer is swimmer Robin Lixor. The most famous Estonian Olympic athlete is probably Erki Newell, who won gold in the decathlon in Sydney in 2000. Paralympians will look to get their share of the fame here in Tokyo. And there is Robin Lixor. Well, the Horn of African Nation has a cultural history dating back more than three million years. But this is their eighth appearance at the Games. Just one medal. And uh, it was in 2012. The Russian Paralympic Committee walking under a neutral flag. You'll see them wearing neutral uniforms with a special RPC emblem showing these para-athletes. And you notice on the floor there the colours of the flags. They're being blown around by the wind of change. Uh, we'll see that a little later on as well as the Russian Paralympic Committee walk in, smiling and waving, ready to compete. Gold medalists will hear Peter Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto Number no. 1, but not all 23 minutes of it, I suspect. 
big delegation from <laughs> the Russian Paralympic Committee. Of course, hosted the Winter Games in Sochi just a few years ago, both Olympic and Paralympic. Well, since making their debut in 2000, El Salvador sent one athlete to every edition of the Paralympic Games, apart from in 2004, when it sent two. And this is Herbert Asetuno, carried the flag in Rio when he was here on his, uh, there on his own. He's back with friends, though. Norma Salinas. Australia. Also carrying the flag. And carrying the flag for Australia, Danny Di Toro in her seventh Games. The captaincy is a visceral and daily reminder of something more than your own performance, she said, and she's carrying it alongside Riley Batt. We'll be hoping for a third consecutive gold in wheelchair rugby. He is amazing. Well, Austria's competed at every edition of the Paralympic Games. Athletics and table tennis in the past have proved strong. They've won one gold. They did win one gold in table tennis at every edition of the Games between 1960 and 1996, but it's, it's been a little bit quieter since. Natalia Aida is uh, one of the flag bearers. She'll be competing in the shot put. So we've got Gunter Matzinger, triathlete. He won gold in London on the track. Iman Taisir Sarbak will be the first woman to represent her nation, Oman, at the Paralympic Games. She'll compete in women's shot put in this stadium. Flag bearer Mohammed Al Mashaki from athletics as well. You can see the names of the athletes uh, being scrolled around the outside of the stadium. And the Netherlands uh, have to mention their chef de mission. She's the Dutch legend uh, Esther Vigier, retired in London 2012. Tennis player, magnificent 470 match unbeaten winning streak. Seven Paralympic gold medals for the Dutch wheelchair tennis legend. And she's in charge of this lot. And they're the favorites in women's wheelchair basketball. Emmanuel Oku goes in the men's 72 kilogram powerlifting. He's the flag bearer here for the West African nation off the Gulf of Guinea. They've got three athletes competing in athletics, track cycling, and of course, uh, powerlifting. Cape Verde. Two athletes from Cape Verde, both in athletics. In Rio, 400 meter runner Gracilino Barbosa became the first Cape Verdean to win a Paralympic medal. Flag bearers are Kuala Nadiri Piera Semedo and Merilson Fernandez Semedo, both from athletics. Paralympic medals for Kazakhstan all time, including gold in Rio by swimmer Zofia Gebdolina and silver in women's powerlifting for Roshan Koishibayeva. She is one of the two flag bearers. Those two athletes, both 50 years of age, and both are back to compete in Tokyo. Qatar, two athletes, one man, one woman, both in athletics, both silver medalists in shot put in Rio, Sarah Hamdi Masood and Abdulrahman Fiki, both silver medalists in shot put. Canada. Here's a number for you. Canada have banked more than a thousand Paralympic Games medals. And carrying the flag there, Priscilla Gagne, Initially uh, competed in wrestling and karate, but switched to judo because she had more opportunities of competition. And marching with the team, there she is, Stephanie Dixon, the most decorated Canadian at Paralympian. Yeah. She's the chef de mission of the team. Gabon, or the Gabonese Republic, is a nation of about two million on the west coast of Africa. And both of their athletes have spoken about, up about how difficult it is to compete and train with the lack of equipment, but they say they make the best of it. Oh, just spectacular, don't they? Look, uh, the uh, 
East Cameroonians. The national language is French, but it's 25 million people speak 250 native languages. Yulam Atangana will compete in the men's sprints and Mimozet Ngashi will compete in the powerlifting. Fatou Sane is a sprinter. She suffered a severe leg injury in a car accident in 19. Five years later, she's a Paralympian and carrying the flag. Smallest country on mainland Africa. And this is their third appearance at the Games. Wonderful Cambodian story from Sydney when 10 of the 11 athletes on the volleyball team were landmine victims and they used the publicity to try to raise awareness about that serious problem. Just one Cambodian athlete in Tokyo, wheelchair racer Van Gun, is the flag bearer back for his second Paralympic Games. They'll be looking to Olivera Markovska Bikova, who won the women's SH1 10 meter air pistol in London. The 46 year old is back again to compete in her fifth Paralympics. One of Guinea's two athletes is visually impaired sprinter Baku Dambakate, who represented France earlier in his career, says he's come back to his roots, hopes to change the outlook on disability in Guinea beginning to feel like a nightclub in here. It is. I just love all the colors. On the west coast of Africa, population of 1.8 million over 36,000 square kilometers. Their third appearance at the Paralympics has sent two athletes to London and one to Rio. And they have two athletes uh, competing here. Sailu Mama Bari in the men's 100 T11. And Kamalai Da Silva Riga, the run of the women's T11 100. Six Paralympic medals from eight games for the Mediterranean island nation. Visually impaired S12, S13 swimmer Carolina Melendi Trio. They have a star known as the Princess of the Pool. She's won two golds, a silver and a bronze, and she's carrying the flag tonight. Lounges filling up. Mm. Bags are packed. Already delivered to the Paralympic Village. Yes. Cuba. Cuba. Omara Duran was a star for Cuba in Rio, sweeping the 100, 200, and 400 meter races for T12 visually impaired athletes. She is one of the two flag bearers. The other is swimmer Lorenzo Perez. He won a gold in. Rio, which was Cuba's first gold medal in swimming. All time, 85 Paralympic medals for Cuba, mostly in track and field. Unidas Castilla, one of Cuba's great legends in Paralympic competition, five gold medals. Greece has sent 45 athletes to Tokyo. Flag bears, Apenisos Constantinos. And uh, he was a uh, gold and silver medalist in athletics in Rio, as well as Anna Nantente, a world champion in bocce. Rio, of course, uh, Athens, of course, hosted the 2004 Paralympic Games. And that always leaves a powerful legacy behind in a city, and I think it has done so as well for Athens and for Greece. There are 45 athletes ready to go in Tokyo.
Kyrgyzstan, a mountainous country in Central Asia. Two athletes in Tokyo, including Arya Stenbak Bazarkulov, who will compete in athletics. And they're strong in powerlifting, too, a very strong tradition in that sport. Welcome to Tokyo, Kyrgyzstan. Beautiful silk jacket there, fantastic hat. Now, Guatemala's two Paralympic medals, a gold and a bronze, have come in powerlifting. This time, their two athletes are competing in athletics. We've got Erika Violeta Esteban Viatorio taking the flag on her Paralympic debut. Isaac Lavia Avia competed in the shot put in London 2012. Kuwait. Kuwait. Now, Kuwait had a bit of a gold drought. Broken at the Rio Games in 2016 when Ahmed Al Matari won the T33 100 metres. Uh, he is flying the flag. It was his first career medal in his second Games. Well, it's her very first appearance at the Paralympic Games, having registered as a Paralympic Committee in 2017. And their first registered Paralympic athlete, Shauna Charles, spoke of changing the national perspective towards people with disabilities. Mike Cruikshank, a 19-year-old, known as the Queen, carries the flag. Michaela Ristowski carries the flag. She's going to be defending the T20 long jump title she won in Rio. Croatia have got five gold medals at the Summer Paralympics, four in athletics, the other in table tennis. They'll be competing in eight sports in Tokyo. Now, if you're wondering why it's not ABC, we should point out, seeing as we're in Japan, we're following Kenya. the order that the Japanese will read them in. Kenya's uh, flag uh, bearer here. Uh, well, Rira Helen Karayuki in her first game, she'll be hoping to be young among the medals in the 41 kilogram powerlifting. She was fourth of the World Championships in 2017. It's their 12th appearance, they've had 36 medals. Paris Sebebe Lago in her first game, a 23 year old, and Herb Adu Ano, a powerlifter, are the two flag bearers for Cote d'Ivoire. Made their debut in Atlanta in 1996. And Umar Kornia won two goals on the track. Costa Rica. Costa Rica's brought nine athletes to Tokyo. They've never won a Paralympic medal, but they're getting close. Their flag bearer, Camilla Haas, was fourth at the World Championships in swimming. And the other flag bearer, 18-year-old table tennis player, Stephen Roman Chinchilla. And watch out for sprinter Sherman Gitti, who competes in the T64 sprints for leg amputees. If he's on form, he could challenge for a medal. Colombia. Erika Maria Castano Salazar is a lawyer and uh, a second family member to represent Colombia at the Paralympics after her brother. She carries the flag. Wonderful, the names uh, being rotated all the way around the stadium here as the athletes come in. They have eight sports they'll be competing in. It's just the second time Congo have been represented at the Paralympic Games and a first for both team members. F56 shot putter Fifi Lukula Lulendo and runner Emmanuel Grace Mumbako will race in the men's 100 meters T11. Democratic Republic of the Congo. Two athletes in Tokyo, including Rosetta Luina Kies, flag bearer. She had her right leg amputated below the knee after she stepped on a landmine. She was introduced to athletics through the rehab program of the Red Cross. And here she is competing. The other flag bearer is Colin Mayombi Mokendi. Sarah Aljumar is a bit of a barrier breaker. She became one of the first three female para-athletes to represent Saudi Arabia in international competition. That was in 2019. Uh, she's joined by Ahmed Shabati, whose wife uh, rides for Belgium, and he is in the equestrian individual test. Second appearance at the Paralympic Games for the second smallest African state, a population of just 201,000 inhabitants uh, on the islands off the coast of Gabon. Alex Anjou 
will go in the 400 and 100 meters T47 on the track. Just one athlete in Tokyo, flag bearer Monica Munga, who said her sport, quote, track and field, gave me hope, freed me from the days I had been discriminated, and gave me confidence. Zambia in Tokyo. There may be a mask on, but you can still see the smiles. Uh, Sierra Leone, fourth appearance at the Paralympic Games. They debuted in 1996. We've got javelin throwers carrying the flag. You need a strong arm, so Juan Faith Jackson and Sorry Carbo. Boy, they had a wonderful time on this uh, track in this stadium a few weeks ago. Well known for their sprinters. They, at the Paralympic Games, Jamaica has won 55 medals, six of them by Sylvia Grant. She is one of the flag bearers, and she is 58 years young. She says age oh, yeah. is just a number. Irma Ketsa Suryani is a wheelchair fencer. She's part of the World Championship Sabre team that won the title in Warsaw this year. It's so the fourth Paralympic Games for Georgia. Their one medal to date came for judoka Zafid Gogokchuri. Made its Paralympic debut in 1992. It sent a delegation of athletes to each edition of the Games since. Mohamed Mohamed, the shot putter and javelin a veteran from Beijing, London and Rio, is very proudly waving to us there. Singapore's flag bearer, Mohamed Deroy Norden from Athletics, will throw shot put and javelin in this stadium. Swimmer Pinju Yip is Singapore's most decorated Paralympian, won her first gold in Beijing when she was only 16. She is part of the 11 member Team Singapore. They've been at all games since gaining independence in 1982. Golds, nine silver, and six bronze. Those golds with their last medals via Elliot Mujaji in the men's T46 in Sydney and Athens over 100 meters. A proud record of having part participated in every Paralympics. 21 athletes across eight sports for Switzerland. Marcel Hugues is a Paralympic legend, of course, competing in his fifth games in the wheelchair. There's eight medals with only two golds coming in Rio in the T54, 800 and marathon. They've had two other wheelchair legends in Heinz Frey and Franz Niedelschmack. Sweden's flag bearer Helena Rippa, world champion in canoe sprint and two-time Paralympic medalist Stefan Olsen from wheelchair tennis. Historically, Sweden has been a Paralympic powerhouse with over 700 medals going back to, you guessed it, Tokyo 1964. <laughs> Two-time Paralympic gold medalist swimmer Michel Alonso Morales and world champion cyclist Ricardo Ten Argelis, the flag bearers. Spain has been a leader in Paralympic sport for years, especially since Barcelona hosted the wonderful games of 1992 when the great Javier Conde thrilled the Catalan crowd with golds in the 800, 1500, 5000 and 10,000 went on to win seven Paralympic gold medals. Watch for Spain to be strong in Baccia, wheelchair basketball, and also five-a-side football. And Susana Rodriguez here in Tokyo, Paralympian in triathlon, also a doctor. She's been working tirelessly on the front lines of the pandemic. And this month, she is on the cover of the current edition of Time magazine in Europe. <laughs> you can feel the joy in the stadium here. DJ Seo is dropping some sick beats there. <laughs> <laughs> the Spanish athletes are loving it. It's difficult to sit still, that's for sure. And who wants to? It's all about movement here. Fantastic. Spain has brought 143 athletes to Tokyo. That's why it's taking a while, competing in 16 of the 22 sports and flexing for the, well, fellow <laughs> athletes, I guess. 
Magnificent. <laughs> Some of the nations have decided not to bring a full contingent to the opening uh, ceremony. The Spaniards saying, we don't want to miss out on this party. <laughs> All representing Sri Lanka, Dinesh Herath, who won a bronze in the F-46 Javelin in uh, Rio. He was shot in the arm while serving in the military. Lives in a World Heritage Site of Anaranapura. And a proud moment for him as he carries the flag for the pearl shaped Indian Ocean Islands. All the athletes bar Primrial Jacordi will take part in athletics. He will be in the para rowing. And you know, you keep those uniforms for decades after you wear them. <laughs> you pull them out every once in a while from the closet and you uh, wear them around the house for the kids. Do they still fit? <laughs> <laughs> no question. No comment. Slovakia! Slovakia! Well, two shooting goals in Rio for Veronika Vladovicheva. And uh, she's back here. She's had five medals in five games. A gold in Beijing. Said, she said, of that, my life suddenly turned around. The impaired girl became a recognized personality. I was no longer just a little girl in the wheelchair. Society and the media began to perceive me as a respected person. Slovenia! Slovenia! Dejan Fabcic is on solid ground in Tokyo. He's going to be competing in the archery having competed in kayaking previous uh, Paralympic Games, including Rio. Slovenia has been keating, competing as an independent country since the Summer Games in 1992. They've won three golds, six silver and seven bronze. They also get the same financial reward as fellow Senegal! Olympians. Senegal. Senegal made its Paralympic debut in Athens in 04. Since then, five athletes have represented the nation in athletics, all in athletics, and they have sent three from athletics to Tokyo, including the flag bearer, Yusufa Diop, competing in his second Paralympic Games. And trying to win his nation's first Paralympic medal. Strong delegation of 20 athletes. Boroslava Peric Rankovic has four medals in the table tennis across three games. She's back for more. Saska Sokolov, who played handball at national club level before turning to athletics, is carrying the flag alongside Laszlo Suranji. In his first Paralympics, is the 42 year old shooter. And a big welcome to the Paralympic family to this island that's located in the southeast Windward Islands of the Lesser Antilles. A 36-year-old Dexoy Crease there only took up para swimming at 34 because he wanted to join everyone else down at the beach. Mm -hmm. It's a good reason. It's a very good reason. Probably a very good beach as well. Somalia! Somalia! Mahdi Abshir Omar, the visually impaired shot footer, is carrying the flag. I encourage every person with an impairment to believe in themselves, he says, that they can achieve anything they want. Don't give up. Well, I'm sure he certainly won't. Two athletes competing in Tokyo, both Solomon Jagiri and Jamina Otoya, qualified by winning gold in Taekwondo at the Oceana Qualification Tournament. <laughs> And maybe this will be the games that Solomon Islands gets its first Paralympic medal. Who knows? Two gold medalists from Rio are carrying the flag. Subin Tipmani in the boccia. And she was a world champion in 2018 as well. So strong favorite uh, at these games. Also. Fong Sakon Payo, who is a 19-year-old, swept to gold in Rio in the 400 and 800 in the T53. For good measure, he collected the silver in the 100 and the relay as well. Choi Yijin was a boccia champion in London. Players use a ramp in the BC3 category. And Ye Jin's mum is her ramp assistant, and I think that's her alongside as well, proudly waving the Korean flag. 343 medals to date for South Korea following the 2016 Summer Paralympics, ranked in the top 20 nations across the world. 
Won two medals, Chinese Taipei did in Rio in 2016. The team has some very good racket sport players, including 42-year-old Ming-Chi Shang, a silver medalist in table tennis in Rio, and 22-year-old jing Hu Fang, who will compete in badminton. That sport making its Paralympic debut here in Tokyo. Just one athlete, the flag bearer from Tajikistan, Akmal Khodorov, will compete in shot put, one of the wheelchair athlete throwing categories, F63. He also represented Tajikistan in para arm wrestling. In fact, won gold at the World Championships. <laughs> Is that training? Well, their motto is freedom and unity, the beautiful East African country of Tanzania, the Great Lakes region of Africa. Madumla Ignas Mateve is back. It's his second games. Arnost Petracek won his team's sole gold medal in Rio, and his reward is to carry the flag. 50 meters backstroke S4. And he looks absolutely delighted to be leading the team out. They won two gold medals on debut in Atlanta in 1996. Banked quite a few more since then, but only won one in both London and Rio. Fifth appearance for the landlocked African nation. The Songa motto is Zokwe Zo, all people are people. Couldn't be more appropriate. Veronica and Dakara. And the women's shot put F41 is their flag bearer. nation that has topped the medal tally the last four Paralympic Games in a row. The flag bearers from archery, double gold medalist in Rio, Zhao Jiamen, and from athletics, two-time long jump world champion Wang Hao. In Rio, Chinese athletes dominated on the track, in the pool, just about everywhere, just to pick a few names. Mao Xing Ding, the table tennis star, won gold in London at age 17, repeated in Rio, and she will try for the hat trick in Tokyo. Zhu Ji was just 17 in Rio when she won gold on the track in the 100 and 200 in the T35, and has a good battle with Australia's Isis Holt, who beat Zhu in both events at the World Championships. So that should be fun. China is always good in women's, uh, is also good in women's sitting volleyball and expect another showdown with the U.S. there for gold, maybe, who knows, and the Chinese women's wheelchair basketball team is very strong. Aurora Tilili and Wali Tila are the flag bearers here. Plenty of medals between them. Tilili has six, four golds in shot put and discus, and an eight-time world champion. Surely a medal beckons here. And Tila has three golds and a silver. And it's the northernmost uh, nation on the African continent, Tunisia. Francisca Mardones Salgulveda is flying the flag. She's the current T54 shot put world champion, but actually competed in the wheelchair tennis at the Paralympic Games in 2012 and 2016. Next up, we've got Alberto Barza, who's going to be swimming. <laughs> Wonderful moment for 43-year-old Lisa Gissing, the multiple world champion in uh, the K44 Taekwondo. She finally gets the chance to go for Paralympic gold, as it's one of the two newly introduced sports at this year's Games. Her husband Christian and daughters Frida and Kasia will be watching very closely. Daniel Wagner is carrying the flag alongside her. There's the German delegation, flag bearers, wheelchair basketball player Marika Miller, simply one of the best in her sport. And from cycling, Michael Tuber, the four-time Paralympic champion, 10-time world champion, still going fast in his 50s. Germany has a big team, 136 athletes, always a strong Paralympic nation. Watch out on the track and in the field for Marcus Rem, his personal best in the long jump. Get this, 
is farther than the Olympic gold medalist flew a few weeks ago, eight meters 62. <laughs> Germany also has qualified several teams, always tough to do, including in sitting volleyball, both men's and women's wheelchair basketball. And they're a world leader in prosthetics, and they don't just keep that to themselves, they share it as well. One representative for Togo, Komialo Kabisa. She'll be competing in the F57 shot put. Togo making its Paralympic debut at the 2016 Games in Rio. It's a full moon tonight. Waiting to peek out from those clouds. A slightly larger contingent for the Dominican Republic here in Tokyo. Just two athletes in 2016, but one medal. That's a good return. Eyes are sparkling. It's just the most glorious sight, despite the masks. 18-year-old Hava El Mali competing in her first Paralympic Games, one of the flag bearers, and from wheelchair basketball, Ridvan Aksoy, a 21-year-old, also in his first game. Turkey sits on the border of Europe and Asia and competes in European championships in many sports. In fact, Turkey's men's wheelchair basketball team, a medalist at the last European Championships and a medal contender here in Tokyo. And the women's goalball team comes to Japan as the reigning Paralympic champions. They are strong. 22 athletes from Nigeria, flag bearers Lucy Ajike, three-time Paralympic champion in powerlifting, and Tajuddin Agunbayadi, two golds in table tennis in Sydney 21 years ago. And the great uh, Paralympian from Nigeria back in 1992 was Adio Ajibola, who roared to a 10.72 clocking in the 100 meters. Namibia, three athletes in Tokyo, all in athletics. Flag bearer Leisha Ishetele, Commonwealth Games medalist and three-time world champion Johannes Shambala who won two silvers at the last Paralympic Games, again, from athletics. Well, the Central American nation uh, appeared in Athens, London, and Rio. And their flag bearers, Carlos Alberto Castillo and Arlen Hidalgo, both on the track. Hidalgo in the women's T11, 1,500 meters. And Castillo goes in the 400 and 1,500 T38. Number. Just the one competitor, Ibrahim Diabu, competing in Rio. Sorry, one of two para-athletes. Uh, he was uh, competing in both the long jump and the 100 meters in Rio. Uh, we've got the shot put. New Zealand! For Balkisa Amado. So New Zealand has a... Uh a flag being carried by a volunteer. They decided not to march in. The little island country of over 5 million won nine gold medals in Rio. They'll be participating here, that's for sure. Watch them uh, for them in wheelchair rugby, the wheel box. 18-year-old Palesha Govendran he will be carrying the hopes of a nation in the women's taekwondo. What an opportunity. She'll be in the K44 58 kilogram event. They come to their fifth Paralympic Games, Nepal. Norway! Norway! Jens Lasse Dokken uh, will be competing in the equestrian event. That flag looks really tall on that rather nifty scooter there. Uh, Ida Louise Overland will be uh, competing for the women's. But uh, one of the stars, Birgit Skarstein, she's a para rower, also known for her cross country efforts in skiing. She's looking to be competing in next year's Winter Paralympics. Ruba Alomari, a massage therapist and mother of two, and Ahmed Neshmaima, the silver medalist in Athens in the short putter, carrying the flag for Bahrain. 22-year-old Ewensen registers the only athlete from Haiti in the shot put carrying the flag. He says he was invited to a Parasport festival by the president of the Haitian Paralympic Committee, and that was the beginning. And of course, difficult days lately in Haiti, so maybe this is a little bit of good news. Pakistan. 
Haider Ali is carrying the flag for Pakistan. He was a silver medalist in Beijing, a bronze medalist in Rio. He's looking for the missing medal in the long jump F 37-38 uh, here in Tokyo. Flag bearers for Panama, Evet Del Rosario Valdez Romero in athletics. Also, well, she's a lawyer and she serves as the general secretary of the Paralympic Committee of Panama. The other flag bearer is Giancarlo Wisdom Lundgren, a bricklayer by trade and competes in the 400 meters in athletics. A team of three athletes, two in track and field and one in powerlifting. Well, in Beijing, Francis Cambon won a silver medal in the men's T46 100 meters. The sports minister of the country said his performance raised the issue of disability in Papua New Guinea to a level it has never been. That's the impact it makes. Tiny little island nation of just 62,000. One athlete, Jessica Lewis, a wheelchair racer, three-time Paralympian, trains, lives in Canada. She was a bronze medalist at the World Championships. And her coach, Curtis Tom, was also a Paralympian. Melissa Nair, Tilna Galliano, and Rodrigo Hermosa making history here because Paraguay making its Paralympic Games debut in Tokyo. It's a big step. Now, three years ago, Antoine Boisvorn lost his right leg after bone cancer. Last year, he learned to swim as part of his recovery. And look now, he's carrying the flag for Barbados ahead of competing in the men's 50 meters freestyle S9. Palestine first sent athletes to the Paralympic Games in the year 2000. It's been represented at every game since. The only sport, though, is athletics, and it's won three Paralympic medals. That's shot putter Hussam F. Azam. Hungary! Hungary! Hungary's flag bearer is seven time Paralympic medalist in fencing, Gyeongji Dani. Hungary has won 144 medals all time, including six by fencing star Paul Zakaras, who got bronze in 88 in Seoul at the Olympic Games, and then was in a car accident, came back to win several more Paralympic medals. Fiji won its first Paralympic medal in London, Elisa Delana. Delena won gold in the men's T42 high jump. Fiji has two athletes in Tokyo, both competing in athletics. Their national sport is rugby sevens, and they won gold in Tokyo. No gold yet for the Philippines. They've got five athletes competing in Tokyo. Jared Pete Mangnoan uh, is a uh, carrying the flag magnificently, and uh, they have been competing. They've won two Paralympic medals, is what I want to say, in powerlifting and table tennis. The flag bearer is a dairy farmer, a mother and an equestrian coach, Pia Paulina Rieti. She'll be in the equestrian dressage test on Thursday. Henry Mani, former para canoe competitor, is the other flag bearer. And he'll be going in the wheelchair sprints. He's inspired by Leo Pekka Tahiti. And Bhutan make their debut here at the Paralympic Games and how spectacular they look. Fantastic. The shot putter Chima Demo, who only took up the sport when she lost her job in 2018, is carrying the flag. To you physically challenge your dream of becoming a sportsman is far from being over, she said. Yaimili Marie Diaz Colon. Well, now she used to play volleyball. And she was given a prosthetic in order to play better. And she decided actually she ran better so she dumped the volleyball and took up running. <laughs> so uh, she'll be competing in the athletics here in Tokyo. Well, the Faroe Islands won all its Paralympic medals, including a gold, between 1988 and the year 2004. This is Havard Vatnaheimer, who's going to race in the men's marathon. He was previously a para-triathlete, uh, but was 
unable to qualify during the pandemic, so has switched to running the marathon. Well, they do have the biggest or second biggest uh, delegation here, but obviously not parading all of them tonight. Evelyn de Oliveira from Boccia, gold medalist in Rio, is uh, carrying the flag alongside Patricio Ferreira dos Santos, a world record holder in the 100 meters T47. And he's the world champion, so he's chasing gold for the second time in uh, Tokyo, having picked it up in Rio as well. President of the Paralympic Committee enjoying their entrance. Bulgaria's flag bearer Milena Todorova from shooting. They have a team of four athletes, including Rojdi Rojdi, gold medalist in the shot put in Rio. He's a three time world champion. I love his quote sport makes the body strong and the spirit eternal. The lounge really is starting to bubble over. A landlocked West African country, the capital is Wagadugu, and uh, two athletes with visual impairments are their flag bearers, Ferdinand Caporari and Victorine Giso, who will go in the shot put F57. They've got six athletes competing at these games. I love the hats. Ferrari! Ferrari! Adeline Mushi Ranzigo is the teenager carrying the flag here for her country, her first Paralympic Games, but a fourth for Remy Nico Bimeze. Carried the flag in 2012 and 2016 as his country's sole representative. Flowing robes, nice and cool on a night like this. And the wind is picking up. Group of islands in the Caribbean to the east of Puerto Rico and west of the British Virgin Isles. Now Maris Nesbitt will compete in the T38 Women's 100. She's carrying the flag tonight. The 20-year-old is studying at the Bell Rea Institute of Animal Technology in Denver, Colorado. And she's tonight enjoying the night of her life. In Rio, Vietnam won its first ever medal, and then won another, and then won another, and then <laughs> won another. Four medals. The first went to powerlifter Van Cong Lee in the 49 kilogram category. Flag bearers are five time Paralympian Huang Tiet Lon Chu from powerlifting and Nikok Hong Chao, a bronze medalist. French speaking West African nation. They've been a member of the IPC since 1997. And only the second time they'll have two athletes, T47 sprinter Faisal Achiba and Charlotte Hondulawan. And they are the flag bearers. She'll be in the shot point. <laughs> right, well, they get the gold medal for the best waving of the flag of the night. That's Abraham Jesus Ortego Abello with Lisbelli Marina Varia Andrade. Now, she's 19 years old, definitely one to watch. Finished third in the 100, 200 and 400 T47 Para-Athletic World Championships. I think her career and fame is just beginning. They are ready to pass it. Belarus! The flag bearer for Belarus is Ludmila Vocek, who's won two Paralympic medals in rowing. These are her fourth Paralympic Games. Uh, Belarus won eight medals in Rio, six of them by one athlete, swimmer Ihari Buki in the visually impaired S13 category. Buki is Belarus's greatest Paralympian, has now piled up a total of 13 medals, 11 of them gold, and he's here in Tokyo trying to win some more. They have a total of eight medals, and uh, Leonora Espinosa Carranza will be making her debut because she's in the Taekwondo in the 49 kilogram uh, K44 and carrying the flag alongside her, Efren 
Sotokuro used his disappointment of fourth place in the marathon five years ago as motivation for the 2020 Games here in Tokyo in the T46. Christian athlete Michel George will be hunting a fourth gold medal. to join Ingrid Bora as the most successful women's Paralympian if she gets it. Sadness in October 2019, her horse FBW Rainman passed away following a colic attack. They won two gold medals at uh, the Paralympic Games in London and another in Rio. Bruno van Hove is also in this team. He's in the gold ball team. He could have had a gold ball team in his family. He's a sex tuplet. Wow. <laughs> Tom, Yele, Arne, Ville, and Loda. Full into traditional power in Paralympic sport. Flag bearers are Joanna Mendick, a three-time Paralympic champion in swimming, and the brilliant jumper, Machez Labieto, who's won gold in both high jump and long jump at both the Paralympic Games and the World Championships. Poland is a team of 93 athletes in Rio, won 39 medals. And Natalia Partika is also part of the team, the table tennis superstar going for her fifth straight singles title. Zarina Skomorac will be taking part in the uh, 10 meter air rifle prone position. Harris Eminovich in table tennis, but Bosnia and Herzegovina has won five Paralympic medals, all in men's sitting ball, sitting volleyball, should I say. Silvers, 2000, 2008 and 2016, and two golds in 2004 and 2012. Well, this nation won an Olympic bronze medal on this track underneath where the athletes are walking just a few weeks ago in the 4x400 meter relay, and I think they're still celebrating. Botswana has two athletes at the Paralympic Games, and both, interestingly enough, are also 400 meter runners. Gloria Majaga is the flag bearer, and Botswana's first and only Paralympic medal was in Athens. Well, 15-year-old Beatrice Montero will make her debut. She's carrying the flag there because she's in the badminton. And alongside a Miguel Montero, he's also making his debut. But he made his debut, big part, in Rio at 15 as well. So he's studying engineering now, but also back at a Paralympics. They've got 34 game, uh, athletes at these games. And they did win the mixed botcher gold uh, bronze in Rio. Christina Gonzalez is in that team for this year's games. David Grat Well, Hong Kong has won no fewer than two Paralympic titles per games since 1992. Yam Kwok Pham is carrying the flag along as she's going to be competing in the women's 100 meters. T36, and that is Hu Kai Chung, who a swimmer alongside her. Honduras. Honduras. Well, they've just got one athlete, Carlos Velasquez, will run in Saturday. It's the men's 100 meters T38 for the Central American nation. It's their seventh Paralympic Games. Don't you love how a lot of the countries have made the masks part of the outfit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Madagascar made its Paralympic debut in 2000 in Sydney. Arlie Faravevi is a sprinter and competes against other visually impaired athletes. Those flags are really racking up. Malawi! Malawi! Well, visually impaired athlete Tornele Panda competed in the women's T13 1500 in Rio. She was disqualified for moving out of her lane. She hopes to redress that at these games. Second time they're competing at the Paralympic Games. Ali. Ali. And carrying their flag, Orotumo Kolibali, a 30-year-old mother of two and dressmaker. She will compete in the women's T57 discus and javelin. Yusuf uh, Kolibali is in the men's 100-meter T13, is alongside her as a flag bearer as well. Officially the smallest nation at this year's Paralympic Games in terms of size. Uh, Liechtenstein and Macau aren't here. That's Vladislaya Kravchenko, originally born in Ukraine. She's a swimmer, 
She was also the flag bearer at the opening ceremony of the 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio. Malaysia! Malaysia! Now, Malaysia will be competing in nine sports. They won three gold medals in Rio five years ago, having never previously won a gold medal at the Paralympic Games. Athletes from Malaysia claimed three gold medals at the 2016 Games, uh, as I said, in Rio. Sito Nur Ayash Mohamed and Bonnie Bonu Gustin carrying the flag. Well, South Africa, we see Kazutjatsu Monjane who's making great strides in women's tennis. She's the first black South African woman to compete at Wimbledon and the first African wheelchair tennis player to qualify for all Grand Slam tournaments in the same year. And I didn't even get to tell you about shoulder toy. Some legends there. Amalia Perez, a powerlifting legend, uh, has a remarkable record. Silver in Sydney and Athens turned into gold in Beijing, London and Rio. She works in IT and is coached by her husband, Enrique Alvarado, and supported by her daughter Melissa. She'll be going for gold here as well. Carrying uh, the flag alongside of Diego Lopez Diaz. He's got a busy schedule in the pool. Two freestyle backstroke and individual medley events to compete in. All four of Mauritius athletes will compete in athletics, including wheelchair racer Marielle Emmanuel Anes Alfonso, who was named Sports Personality of the Year at the National Sports Awards in Mauritius, and not surprisingly, named Flag Bear. Oh, match your leg, leg to the flag. Absolutely awesome. And another beautiful mask as well. Edmilsa Gouverneau was the only representative of Mozambique at Rio 2016. She claimed an historic bronze in the women's T12 400. She gets to carry the flag alongside Hilario Chavela. And those costumes look absolutely spot on for the sultry temperatures here tonight. This is a very special moment for this small Asian nation located in the Indian Ocean, making its Paralympic debut. Two athletes both race in the 100 meters on the track in the visually impaired categories. Welcome to the first ever flag bearers for Maldives, Fatima Ibrahim and Mohamed Mazin. This is a special moment. Moldova, Eastern European country, has won two medals at the Paralympic Games. Oleg Kretfel will compete in judo. Gold medalist representing Russia back in 2008. He has also competed in the Olympic Games in judo before he lost his sight. And he's one of the two flag bearers, along with Larissa Marinkova from powerlifting. Well. They've uh, won 26 medals in the last four games, but all except one has come from uh, athletics. Mohamed Lana's bronze in the para in Rio was that uh, exception. They'll be represented in six sports by 13 women and 21 men. First sent athletes to the games in Seoul in 1988. Well, Mongolia won its first Paralympic medal at the Beijing 2008 Games in archery. Archer Ganbatar Zandra will be representing Mongolia tonight. He's the one with that spectacular hat. Looks like he's got a temple on his head. It's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Montenegro in southeastern Europe, part of the Balkans. Five athletes in Tokyo. The flag bearers, Mariana Gorenovic, competing in her third Paralympic Games in athletics. Silver at the European Championships. And Filip Radovic, also carrying the flag silver in table tennis at the European Championships. Jordan. The current F-34 world champion shot putter, Ahmed Hindi, is our flag bearer here for Jordan. Jordanian athletes secured three medals at the 26 Games in Rio, all of them coming in powerlifting. Time for a selfie. Oh,
Ken Teptida, the 21-year-old visually impaired sprinter carrying the flag. He's one of several athletes from that country who are taking part in the project with the Japanese not-for-profit organization Asian Development with Disabled Persons. Love the purple. Encouraging social integration and independence among people with impairments in Lao People's Democratic Republic. Let me introduce you to a bit of a gold machine here, or a gold machine, should I say. Iger's Apinus is a discus thrower. He's looking to add to his collection. He's won eight of his country's 15 medals to date, four of those five gold medals. Gold medalists uh, in the gold ball in Rio five years ago. They only have the six golds they won to come from a sport other than athletics. And they've got a big start to their competition as well. They've got a big flag bearer. Well, Mindegas Bilias on the men's shot put gold in F37, as well as silver in the discus. That's why he's carrying the flag. Libya's only medal at the Paralympic Games, won by powerlifter Abdelrahman Hamed in Sydney. Two athletes in Tokyo, including Mahmoud Abadar, who will compete in Taekwondo as it makes its Paralympic debut. IPC family growing all the time. Patience Johnson, Thomas Mulba, strong eye action needed to carry the flag, but they're saving their arms because they are competing in the javelin. Both athletes in javelin action, resting up ahead of a stiff competition. But still coming out to this glorious opening ceremony at the Tokyo National Stadium. Well, since 1972, they've won four medals, uh, but three have come from the same athlete, Karol Eduard Novak, who has a gold and two silvers in road cycling from Beijing and London, and he's one of the nine athletes here as well. Table tennis player Bobby Simeon is back for his second games, European Championship silver medalist in 2019. Looking to prove on fifth in Rio. This is I and Tom Habscheidt, second in the 2019 World Championships. So one of the things ahead of this Games, we don't know who's in form or not, but a silver at the World Championships suggests he will be one to watch in the T63 shot put. Hermes Mouvunye competing in his third Paralympic Games in athletics. He's had two top five finishes in his first two appearances. He'd like to upgrade, of course. And Rwanda's sitting volleyball team for women, the first sub-Saharan women's team in history in any sport to compete at the Paralympic Games. They qualified in Rio, and they've qualified again in Tokyo. I'm liking this coordinated parade we've got here. Well, the flag has a Basutu hat, or Makoroto, at the centre, adopted in 2006, officially known as the Kingdom of Lesotho, Litsetso Kotletle, from Mokotong, high in the Maluti Mountains, 10th in the discus in F64, competes in the same event on Sunday. Cyclist Edward Malouf winning both of their uh, Paralympic medals in Beijing for Lebanon. This year's team, just one athlete, Arz Zawardin, whose background is in fencing, but he'll be competing in a track and field, and he, of course, is the flag bearer. Just three teams to come. Oh. And the next one will be hosting one of the games in Los Angeles in a few years' time. USA, probably not much of a surprise to learn that American athletes have won more Paralympic golds than any other nation, more of any color. In fact, flag bearers Melissa Stockwell, three-time world champion in paratriathlon, whose injury happened while she was in the military in Baghdad, a roadside bomb. The other flag bearer, the legendary wheelchair rugby star, Charles Chuck Aoki, leads a U.S. team trying to complete its medal set. They've won bronze in London, silver in Rio. They're hoping for gold in Tokyo. 
And this lineup includes some big names like Tachana McFadden, the 17-time Paralympic medalist in wheelchair racing, and Hunter Woodall, another star, the first double amputee to earn an NCAA Division I college scholarship. And the U.S. men's wheelchair basketball team led by Steve Sirio is the favorite for gold. So is the U.S. women's sitting volleyball team, the reigning Paralympic champions. USA will be strong in Tokyo. Some gold ball is getting down to the groove there. Right, three years' time, this party will move to Paris. For now, the focus for the team from France will only be competing in all but three events in Tokyo. They tallied 28 medals in Rio de Janeiro, one of the smallest in their history, 17 fewer than it had won in London, but they will be aiming big in three years' time. And Sandrine Matinee, one of the flag bearers, rather memorably broke her left ankle during a semi-final bout in the judo in London. She took up judo because she said she wanted to prove that she could be successful. And we have Stefan Uday, the wheelchair tennis legend, multiple Grand Slam titles to his name. He's the reigning men's doubles Paralympic champion in wheelchair tennis. They have a big group. You can just keep going on, I think. Well, red, white and blue, beautifully arranged there. They're, they're walking like the national flag. And their placard bearer is getting right into it with them as well. And expect a big push from France over the next few years as they get ready to host the games. I know they have a very young wheelchair basketball team and they didn't qualify for Tokyo, but they will be pushing hard for Paris in 2024, both on the men's and women's sides. The final nation to enter this magnificent arena, the host nation. Well, since appearing in uh, 1964, they had 16 athletes then. They won a gold in the men's doubles table tennis. Now their delegation is 260 strong. They'll be taking part in every single game. So a proud moment for sure for every single one of these athletes. Mamitani and Koya Ibukushi are the two flag bearers. But a team behind them of a multitude of medal prospects. Omoyo Ito, previous world record holder in the 800 and marathon in the T52, looking to add to that total of 377 medals. Introduction of para badminton will give Sarina Staomi a chance to show her brilliance on the biggest stage of them all. She was paralyzed from the waist down after a car accident in 2016. Now, formidable in wheelchair rugby as current world champions. I have high hopes for gold here. Yeah. And I think the whole team is coming out. And you see that with the host nation. Uh, and I can remember that in Sydney and in Atlanta and in Barcelona. Not one of the athletes from the home country wants to miss these opening <laughs> ceremonies. Absolutely. Pineda Shingo, the top ranked uh, men's wheelchair tennis player in the world. 25 Grand Slam singles titles. He was the gold medalist in Beijing and London. Wants to win that gold here on home turf. Tomoki Sato, silver medalist in the 400 and 1500 in the T52 in Rio. But since then, he's won both those events at successive world championships. So building up nicely to chase down the gold medal on this uh, beautiful track. Fast, fast track too. Very, very fast. I'm sure all the athletics athletes are very excited. And a big moment for Yamamoto Atushi. Twice a silver medalist in the long jump. He'll be hoping for the gold here, but he's also competed in snowboarding at the 2018 Winter Paralympic Games. And another of those doubling up Ota Shoko making a Summer Games debut. She was in the Winter Games as well. She will compete 
in the Taekwondo 58 kilogram category K44. It's a short turnaround. It's 192 days between now and the Beijing opening ceremonies of the Paralympic <laughs> Winter Games. This is very good preparation. But what a wonderful moment for all these athletes to walk into their home stadium and celebrate a truly remarkable achievement, reaching your home games and taking part in these Paralympic Games. And we saw how well the Olympic athletes did on the uh, medal tally a few weeks ago, and, we, and I suspect it'll be the same, and, and that will boost the spirits of the athletes and we hope the nation. Well, in Rio, they, they had a good games, but uh, they didn't win a gold medal. There's 10 silver and 14 bronze. So with athletes in every event here in uh, Tokyo, they'll be uh, well amongst the gold medalists, you'd imagine, the preparation they've put in for the last five years. Not all the athletes we've seen parade in tonight are still here. Some have walked in and have uh, headed out to prepare for competition tomorrow because it gets underway bright and early for some. Some still have a wait. Yeah, good point, very good point. You want to be rested, you want to, because that's why you came here to compete. I can tell you that uh, Koyo Iwabushi, the table tennis player carrying the flag for Japan, is on the table at 9.40 on day one of the games tomorrow, but he won't miss out on this. There'll be a fast bus back to the Paralympic Village. The flags are back out across the buildings on the Paralympic Village. You know which country is staying in which block. All about the flags blowing in the wind. Well, from all reports, the village is beautiful and the food is magnificent as it always is. The selection is incredible. Oh, a little bit of rain starting to fall over the stadium. That's not going to dampen the show. Not one bit. Because a show is what we have coming up next. 183 Paralympic uh, delegations there are. Not all of them are here, but as we heard, Five new nations making their debuts at the Paralympic Games here as the family grows. Well, the music has been sensational. Japanese artists such as Seho, we see the DJ up there, Park Golf and Konishi Ryo has produced the music that uh, these athletes have been uh, jumping and jiving to for the last uh, hour or so. And you no doubt at home. Welcome the world's athletes to the 2020 Tokyo Summer Paralympic Games.
Spectacular the Paralympians are symbols of the winds of change blowing outward from the stadium to reach the entire world. Welcome to Pada Airport, where you are about to witness the arrival of a variety of unique aircraft carried to us on the three color winds of change. Now, let us begin with a story about a little one wing plane. Please enjoy the show. Wind dances. Now, the job of the wind dancers is to help generate the wind we need to assist. These unique aircraft we're about to see in taking flight. There's the star. Little one wing plane. this little one-wing plane wants to do is fly. But she just can't get up there. Sometimes you're nervous to try. Perhaps you need a bit of encouragement. Not all planes are built the same. And yet they fly. Now the cast playing these unique aeroplanes all have some kind of impairment. Vision, hearing, lower limb deficiency, intellectual dwarfism, cerebral palsy and others. But none of them have let impairment get in their way. They've all got their own unique way of flying.
Sometimes you need to see it before you can be it. Some just need some fans to help them fly. There's a cheeky perky character now. Need some oil. <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that, because this is a talkative plane that uses sign language to take to the skies. Now, what our talkative plane is saying is you can fly if you get the belief in yourself. Chibi Mueko works as a burlesque performer. Try as she might, she just can't take off. This is Mitsuko Takeuchi. She's wearing a pair of headphones to listen to audio signals sent by a phone attached to her hip, which enables her to walk unaided through the arena.
And we'll be back to the little one ring plane's efforts to take to the skies.
Yoshimoto Seiko, a seven-time Olympian, having thanked the people of Japan and Tokyo and the essential frontline workers around the world, hopes that the Tokyo Games are an opportunity to build a society where everyone feels free to live in mutual support of each other. Your Majesty, the Emperor, athletes, Prime Minister Suga, Governor Koike, President of the Organizing Committee, Hashimoto Seiko, friends from the Paralympic movement, sports fans from all over the world. Good evening and welcome to the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. I cannot believe we are finally here. Many doubt this day would happen. Many thought it impossible. But thanks to the efforts of many, the most transformative sport event on Earth is about to begin. The Japanese government, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government, Tokyo 2020 Organizing Committee, the International Olympic Committee never lost faith and worked tirelessly alongside the International Paralympic Committee to make these games happen. We thank our hosts for trusting we can deliver safe games for athletes and officials, but also for the Paralympic so for the Japanese society. From the bottom of my heart, Arigato Japan! We will honor our host, we will honor your trust, your Omotenashi, so that the outstanding legacy these Paralympic Games leave this country is a new perception of persons with disabilities. But we want more. We want to change the entire world. That is why the IPC and the International Disability Alliance spearheaded the launch of the 15. Over the next 10 years, the 15 will challenge how the world's 15% with disabilities are perceived and treated at a global level. With the support of 20 international organizations, civil society, the business sector and the media, we will put the world's 1.2 billion persons with disabilities firmly at the heart of the inclusion agenda. The Paralympic Games are for sure a platform for change. But every four years is not enough. It is up to each and every one of us to play our part every day to make for a more inclusive society in our countries, in our cities, in our communities. When humanity should be united in its fight against COVID-19, there is a destructive desire by some to break this harmony. Overlooking what brings us together to focus on the factors that differentiate us fuels discrimination. It weakens what we can achieve together as human race. Difference is a strength. It is not a weakness. And as we build back better, the post-pandemic world must feature societies where opportunities exist for all. When the games were postponed last year, Paralympic athletes were beacons of hope. When the shadow of uncertainty was upon us, they never stopped training, they never stopped pursuing their dreams, they never stopped believing they would be here in this stadium tonight. They are a force of nature, they are a force for good. Their resilience empowered many, but they did not do this alone. Behind them, were the National Paralympic Committees and the International Federations, supporting them and navigating them 
through this unprecedented time for humanity. This is the strength of the Paralympic movement, working together to provide athletes the best platform to shine. Paralympians, you gave your all to be here. Blood, sweat, and tears. Now is your moment to show to the world your skill, your strength, your determination. If the world has ever laid you, now is your time to be relayed. Champion, hero, friend, colleague, role model, or just human. You are the best of humanity and the only ones who can decide who and what you are. You are the truth. You are amazing. You choose to be the greatest in whatever the plan is. Your performances will change the fortunes of your lives. But most importantly, they will change the lives of 1.2 billion forever. This is the power of sport, to transform lives and communities. Change starts with sport. And from tomorrow on, Paralympic athletes start once again to change the world. Don't worry, Gato. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. <laughs> well, a dynamic, compassionate plea and a message delivered by IPC President Andrew Parsons. Ladies and gentlemen, the Paralympic flag. 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 Paralympic flag.
The performance is by the Power Ensemble. Enzo, Paraka no Minna san des. Original piece called Ikuru, performed live here in six movements. Six athletes, all active uh, Paralympians, taking part in the games here, and playing a pivotal role right now. Being accompanied by the Para Ensemble, many of these musicians also coming through the audition process. Recognition of the role played by essential workers and frontline uh, workers over the last year and a half in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. One of the movements. 
moment in this piece of music incorporate sounds made by trees that are no longer there. They were uprooted in the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011. Just one of 70,000 pines still standing, the Miracle Pine. Services take over as the Paralympic flag, the Jitos Center, taken up to the flagpole to be flown high amongst uh, the stand here above these Paralympians. Miyo Sakamoto on vocals there. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Paralympic Anthem. Paralympic Anthem. Paralympic Anthem. Paralympic during rendition of the Paralympic Anthem. but important part of the, the oaths. I think for, for the athletes, coaches, officials.
How important is this oath, Rob? I think the further you get into your career, the more you think about things like that. Maybe the, the Paralympic rookies are so daunted by so many other things, they might not think about it until this moment, and then they hear it and think about it and dwell on it. But it's important. Fair play is important from all sides. Well, the athletes uh, oath dates back to 1920 in Antwerp in the Olympic Games. It's changed over the years. in line with the International Paralympic Committee's commitment to inclusion and non-discrimination. So for those who don't speak Japanese, uh, what they were saying was in the name of the athletes, the judges, the coaches and officials, we promise to take part in these games, respecting and abiding by the rules and the spirit of fair play. Together we stand in solidarity, commit ourselves to sport without doping, without cheating, without any form of discrimination. We do this for the honour of our teams in respect for the fundamental principles of Paralympism and to make the world a better place through sport. It's returned to the Para Airport and the little one-wing plane struggles to take flight. She is reluctant to try. It's an internal struggle. This violin is a symbol of her internal struggle. Manami Ito is a former Paralympic swimmer and Japan's first ever nurse with a prosthetic arm. She only took up the violin after losing her right arm in a road accident. Again, showing how technology can aid not only athletes, but in other areas of life. So we've left the airport now. She's meeting new friends. This is the dazzling truck. And the didgeridoo is the voice of the truck. She's intrigued. And a little, a little preview, we've got a guitar legend on the way.
On top of the truck there is Gimiko, Japan's first amputee model. Conversation continues. Here we go. You may remember this is Battle Without Honor or Humanity, written and performed here by legendary Japanese guitarist Hotai. Wrote this for Quentin Tarantino's film Kill Bill. And he's written this piece specially for this Paralympic Games opening ceremony. We can feel that through our seats in the stadium here. It's all new to the little one-wing plane. But if she needed uh, inspiration, this could do the trick. Hiroyoka Tagawa, composer guitarist. He holds his guitar like that because being vision impaired, he's never seen anybody play the guitar in the conventional way, so he does it his own way. Kawasaki Akihito, limited mobility in his fingers, but he plays the way he can with what he's got. the ingenuity that's a, the hallmark of the Paralympic Games on and off the field. Should also mention Aya Kono. She's playing bass, uh, 17 years old from Osaka. 
doing things her way at her own pace, in her own words. That's why we can feel it through the stadium. It's a 17-year-old playing. <laughs> Alongside a legend, a thumping rhythm. I think the little one wing plane is beginning to believe in herself. Maybe she just needs a little more help. Essentially, he's using a socket that you would use for an artificial leg without the foot attached, but with something on the bottom that looks like it's cushioned. This is Ken Barra Kenta, also an aerial performer, has congenital spina bifida and is known for his acrobatic dances. Oh my Koichi. Continuing to dance after having his left leg amputated below the knee following a road accident.
So the little one-wing plane has returned to the para airport. She's hearing, feeling the winds of change. <laughs> Friends on the truck are there to help her. It is dark and it's been lit up now. Can she fly? All her friends are with her to encourage her now. Love this. Like a long jumper getting ready to take off. Former to get strong enough to make it down this runway. She's made it. Have lift off. Thirteen-year-old Wago Yui had never performed before being picked out of the audition to take centre role in this performance. I get the sense she'll be flying again soon. Star. Absolutely remarkable, beautifully told. Pictures from Stoke Mandeville, where the first Paralympic Games was held, or the beginnings of the Paralympic movement. The flame lighting took place in Stoke Mandeville on the 12th of August. And it's been taken around 880 municipalities across all of Japan's 47 prefectures. And everybody's been encouraged to light their own flame to add to the Paralympic torch. We also saw that the torch relay was carried out in groups of three, which is a significant number for this uh, movement and for this opening ceremony. The idea being that they were meeting new people for the first time. And how the world needs to reconnect at this juncture. You know, it's taken a lot of people to get here, but uh, Dr. Ludwig Gutmann had some good ideas, didn't he? Absolutely. It was his idea to stage games to help servicemen returning from war. And on the day that the London Games of 1948 got underway, the first Paralympic Games, let's call it that, got underway at Stoke Mandeville. Not many sports you might recognize today. Should I say snooker? Dart archery was on the schedule then. Oh, there are 22 sports and over 500 events and medals to be contested over the next dozen days. And if you take a good look at these beautiful torches, you'll see that there are five petals 
And if you look from the top, not when it's lit, I suggest you'll see it looks like a cherry blossom flower. The sun dancer. Rita Kazio. That saying, if you see it, then you can be it. And I feel like this ceremony opens eyes and, and hearts for people down the road that we might see in Paris, that we might see in Los Angeles, and might see in Brisbane. Not only that, but performers, That's musicians, what I mean. everything. Yeah. Not just athletes. And not just at the Paralympic Games. Paralympic torch is made from a recycled aluminium originally used in the construction of prefabricated housing units in the aftermath of the Great East Japan earthquake. Transformation of the housing units to torch is a symbol of peace and underlines the reconstruction efforts being made in the disaster affected areas. Sustainability, a big part of these games, the medals made from old cell phone parts. flame is passed on and those torches cherry pink to match the blossoms that uh, are so valued in Japan
Everybody wants a snapshot of this moment in time, this moment of history. You mentioned the threes. Three people again. Three agitos. builds with this uh, wonderful music. Kanaide dance, rearranged version by Klambon and Kirakai. We have our Paralympic cauldron playing the part of the sun for so many elements of this opening ceremony. It now opens again, five petals. This cauldron opening up. Keeping with the sustainability uh, theme, it'll be powered by hydrogen. ceremony the Tokyo 2020 Summer Paralympic Games. Right in Tokyo. It 
It's really happening. There's an additional uh, cauldron. At the Ariaki side of the Yume no Ohashi Bridge in uh, Tokyo's waterfront area. That'll burn for the duration of the competition period as well. volley of spectacular fireworks over the Olympic Stadium. Here is the conclusion of the opening ceremony. Just hours away from the start of competition here. needs it most the athletes will be amazing they'll amaze us with their skill and strength dazzle us with their brilliance and leave us breathless at their fierce determination to succeed regardless of the odds think back to the words of the president of the Paralympic International Paralympic Committee Andrew Parsons we want to use the platform of the Paralympic Games to create positive change that leads to a more inclusive society not just in host cities but around the world Wonderful sight at the end of a truly memorable evening here in the Olympic Stadium. A beautiful story told by some absolutely incredibly talented actors, amateurs and professionals, inspiring us and inspiring the athletes. Hope you enjoyed it. The games are about to get underway. In Tokyo's Summer Paralympics. And well, the flame will burn for the next 12 days, and the athletes will. Uh, Get ready to perform and, uh, and achieve that greatness. A little rain wasn't going to stop the fun in Tokyo. Not tonight. That was just something special. It was a beautiful, emotional, not too much razzmatazz, but enough to get us all geared up and ready for the next 12 days. Get us thinking as well, inspiring, motivating, and truly memorable. Tokyo 2020 Summer Paralympics are officially open. Competition for 12 days is going to be extraordinary. Enjoy it, won't you? <laughs>